Right. Uh, before the break, I was talking about uh, some strategies that involve taking positions with respect to Vegas. Uh, we discussed the case where we had a short premium position uh, that uh, that normally benefits uh, with the, with the uh, negative Vega. It has a negative Vega, and therefore, because downside uh, uh, changes in stock prices is associated with higher volatility. Uh, therefore, if there is a downside movement on in the stock price, uh, the volatility would, is likely to increase. And because the uh, the position has a negative Vega, so because of the negativeness of the Vega and an increase in volat volatility, it would normally result in a decrease in the value of the portfolio. And therefore, therefore, it would be more appropriate to combine this with a short delta strategy. So that if there is a downside movement in in, in the stock, the short delta would operate in the opposite direction and result in an increase in value of the portfolio, thereby annulling some of the impact of the negative Vega. So, that is uh, that is the logic of having a slight uh, short delta bias when you are when you are playing a negative Vega strategy. Similarly, if uh, on, on the same rationale, if you are uh, if you want to have a um, trade or you want to create a strategy with a positive Vega, it would be better that you um, combine with a slightly positive delta position, uh, so that so that what happens now, if there is an increase in uh, the stock price or increase in let's let's talk about the increasing implied volatility, that means the stock price is going down because uh, 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 only uh, usually usually uh, downward uh, for changes in the stock price are associated with increase in vol volatility. Therefore, if the stock price goes down and there is an increase in volatility, uh, that increase in volatility would create would and uh, would increase the value of my portfolio because of a positive Vega. And at the same time, because there is a decrease in the, the stock price has gone down and I have a positive delta. So, the value of my portfolio would also go down and there again we have a counteracting influence. But this counteracting influence would be more relevant, more relevant when the stock price goes up and we have a declining volatility situation. Because in that situation, the positive Vega would the Vega effect or the positive Vega effect would result in a decline in the in the portfolio price or uh, derivative value, and therefore uh, the the long delta effect, the small long delta effect that uh, we are talking about, would try to balance this out. Uh, because the stock price has gone up. So, it is basically uh, 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 playing the nuances of the market, you know, uh, balancing one thing with the other. We have talked about playing the gamma with the theta. Similarly, here we are having theta versus A, we are having Vega versus the delta. And so, that is the kind of uh, strategies that, uh, that usually uh, arise in the market. So, these are some positive Vega strategies, these are some negative Vega strategies. So, uh, I have summarized everything that we have talked about, uh, about delta, gamma, theta and Vega in the form of a table in terms of moneyness and also and also in terms of expiration. As expiration approaches what happens to the theta, delta, gamma, theta and Vega uh, for in the money, at the money and out of the money options. It could act as a ready reference. Uh, rho is, is another uh, option Greek, perhaps not so important. Well, it is not so important for a simple reason that the, uh, the risk free uh, rate or the risk free rate of interest is not as volatile as any, any of the other factors are. And as a result of which, this, this particular option Greek uh, uh, does not assume a primary importance or a primary relevance when talking about uh, trading strategies at least for you know short options uh, uh, because over that period uh, the variation is rho is uh, very unlikely and very insignificant by and large let us look at some strategies long near expiration strategies what happens uh, we've talked about it uh, in some context uh, if you expect a big move you, if you expect a big move, what would you do? 
you want to have you want to benefit from the big move uh, you don't suppose you don't know the direction of the move but you know that it's a big move uh, the first thing that you would do is would uh, that would occur to you is that you can benefit by taking a positive gamma uh, the higher the gamma uh, the higher would be your profit if that perception of yours if that perception of yours is turns out to be correct in other words if the stock price actually does move uh, significantly from its present position then you are likely to benefit significantly so you should go long so uh, uh, large positive gamma is what you should be looking at if you expect a big move now the large positive gamma uh, could could possibly be coupled with a large positive vega if you are expecting that the the vega uh, that the volatility is also likely to uh, increase significantly for example if you expect if you have some bias uh, some bias about the perception or about the direction of this move one one situation is that you are uh, you are absolutely indifferent or ignorant or uh, unprejudiced about the direction of the move it could either be upwards or downwards in that case you would obviously prefer a uh, neutral vega position and a, a positive gamma position but suppose you are also uh, uh, perceiving that the the volatility is also likely to increase volatility volatility normally would increase when the price goes down so your perception is that the market is going to go bearish and the market is going to be vol uh, volatile and the market is going to uh, uh, um, go bearish significantly in that case it would be worthwhile going for a, a positive gamma positive vega scenario Mm, uh, now, obviously, if you have a positive gamma, positive vega scenario that can arise by taking long positions in the call options, for example. But if you do that, where do you lose out? You lose out on theta. Uh, long calls close to expiration have very high negative thetas. In other words, as time passes, the amortization of their value is very rapid. Uh, because the amortization of their value due to time passage of time is rapid now if this long if this big move that you are per, uh, perceiving and that, that you are thinking that is as per your perception does not materialize then where do you go wrong well that negative theta is going to rapidly eat into your uh, your uh, value of your portfolio and you could be uh, you could be um, burdened with losses due to the uh, due to the decay of time value of the options so that that is that is basically you know uh, the interplay between these these various option grades uh, a long gamma a long gamma versus theta and then we have uh, uh, vega versus theta as well that depends on uh, you know the 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 perception that at the end of the day it all boils down to perception uh, your perception will generate will result in your creating a strategy and that create uh, that strategy will yield money or that strategy will yield positive results if your perception turns out to be correct because that is what you based the strategy on and if your perception does not turn out to be correct you are obviously likely to lose money because it's a zero sum game essentially so the converse is when you have you know uh, you have a perception that the that uh, the market is not likely to be volatile or uh, uh, the the market is not likely to be volatile or the the uh, this uh, the in what you call the stock price is going to go up and that kind of thing you can take a converse strategy negative vega and a negative gamma strategy and and so on in fact a positive gamma negative vega strategy for example let's look at a positive gamma negative vega strategy a positive gamma uh, would give you profits uh, on the movement of the stock price irrespective of the direction a negative gamma a negative vega will give you profits provided the volatile uh, volatility decreases we know that the volatility will decrease or in general the volati volatility decreases if the stock price goes up if there's a bullish run so what um, so what when would we take up the strategy we would take up the strategy when our perception is bullish uh, and our perception is of a powerful move of the underlying asset a, a positive 
big move of the underlying asset and increase in pr price, a significant increase in price of the underlying asset. I'd rather have a, a positive gamma and a negative vega and that could well benefit me. Uh, these are some slides which um, cover the payoff of the iron condor which I did not discuss earlier while talking about trading strategies. Uh, um, the information is there on the slide. It is pretty straightforward, pretty similar to what we have for the butterfly spread. Uh, so, I will not spend too much time on this, but uh, the details are here on the slides and uh, can be looked into. Uh, similarly, we have a regular condor. There are two types of condors. In fact, in fact the regular condor consists of four calls and uh, two long and two short. Uh, uh, call at long call at price k 1, long call at price k 4 and uh, uh, short calls at price k 2 and k 3, k 2 and k 3 are sandwiched between k 1 and k 4. Uh, obviously, if the price uh, if the stock price ends up less than k 1, there is no call exercise between k 1 and k 2, only a is exercised between k 2 and k 3, a and b will be exercised and this way this whole thing will uh, continue. This is the payoff of the regular condor. Now, Vega positive theta neutral traits. Well, uh, this is another variant uh, where we have a Vega positive, but we have made theta neutral. Now, if theta is neutral, what are we trying to do? We are trying to insulate us uh, ourselves against uh, decay in the value of the option if the stock price does not move. You see what happens? Uh, normally, we play a strategy according to certain perception about the stock price uh, um, I, moving either up or down. Uh, however, if the stock price does not move is very stable or is very stable, we tend to lose the value of the option due to theta decay or due to time decay. Uh, by having a theta neutral portfolio, uh, uh, what we do is uh, that we minimize the loss of, of value of the portfolio, derivative portfolio due to the time decay. So, by having a theta neutral portfolio, we are protecting ourselves, insulating ourselves against time decay to some to a large extent and we will benefit from an increase in volatility the, uh, if we have a Vega positive uh, theta neutral trade if uh, in, in this kind of strategy uh, will benefit if obviously, if uh, um, the volatility increases, if the market is bullish and there uh, sorry market is bearish I am sorry market is bearish as a result of a uh, volatility increases and um, the Vega positive will result may result in an increase in value of the portfolio uh, and and if the market does not change market remains stable at least I may not get the profits due to a positive Vega but at least I do not incur loss due to theta being neutral or the 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 amortization of the time value is minimal because I have tried to optimize uh, on the theta. How this is done? Well, uh, we have theta positive uh, calendar spreads uh, whereas theta negative straddle. So, if I have a combination of calendar spreads and uh, straddles, uh, both of them are Vega positive. So, I have a combined Vega positive strategy and uh, I have a theta positive with a theta negative strategy as a result of a theta more or less counters uh, between the two uh, components of the portfolio, whereas Vega is added and makes the Vega even more positive. So, uh, that depends our per on our perception. If we feel that uh, the volatility is likely to increase, we can use the strategy with benefit. Some examples to conclude. Uh, an investor X has taken a short position in 2000 calls and 2000 puts on the stock of a stock of XYZ Limited. 2000 calls and 2000 puts on the stock of XYZ Limited. Over the price range of interest to X, the price of call increases at the rate of 70 percent in the price of increase of the underlying stock. In other words, delta of the call is 0.70. Whereas, the price of put decreases 30 percent that means, delta of the put is minus 0 0.30. What is the number of shares of the underlying stock that you must purchase or short sell in order to create a delta neutral portfolio? Well, let us see what happens. 
delta as I mentioned delta of the call is 0 0.7 and the delta of the put is minus 0 0.3. Remember delta of a put option is always negative or 0. So, the number of calls is let us check short positions this is important short positions. So, both calls and puts are short. So, calls is minus 2000 and puts is also minus 2000. So, what do I get in terms of delta? Minus 2000 into 0 0.7 that gives you minus 1400 that is for delta of the call options 2000 short call options and minus 2000 into minus 0 0.3 that is six plus 600 delta uh, for the 2000 put options. The aggregate delta of the portfolio turns out to be minus 800. And in order to neutralize this minus 800 of delta, what will I do? I will take plus 800, I have to create or I have to add to the portfolio plus 800 of delta and that I can do straight away by taking a position in a long position in 800 units of the underlying asset. Remember, one unit of the underlying asset contributes plus 1 in terms of delta and one short in the underlying asset contributes minus 1 in terms of the underlying in terms of the in delta and therefore, if you take a long position 800 units of the underlying asset you get 800 delta plus and the net delta of the portfolio comes to 0. Another problem, suppose that a portfolio held by a US bank can be made delta neutral with a short position of 6.20 million pounds. Remember this is a US bank, so the home currency is US dollars. What he says is that and the position can be made delta neutral with a short position in 6.20 million pounds. That means, the original position has a has a long or has a positive delta of 6.20 million. That is that is why you see it and that is why if I take a if I take a short position in 6.20 million pounds, I create a delta neutrality. In other words, if this position is not taken, if the short position is not taken, then what would be the delta of the portfolio? It would be plus 6.20 million pounds, uh, <coughs> 6.20 million. The position is however, proposed to be made delta neutral by taking a short position in 9 month future contracts rather than the spot short position in pounds. He says I do not want to take a short position in pounds, what I want is that I want to take a, uh, 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 take a forward contract in a 9 month forward contract rather than the, the spot position in pounds. Risk free rates are 66 percent. Now, this figure is slightly abnormal, but we do not worry about it. Uh, this is probably uh, uh, to, uh, to enhance the visibility of the uh, problem, uh, to enhance the conspicuousness of the result of the solution. So, risk free rates are 66 percent in the US and 6 percent in the UK. What is the number of pounds that need to be shorted under the forward contract? that need to be shorted under the forward contract. That is the big question. Let us see the solution. Delta of the given portfolio is this expression as I just mentioned, because you can make it delta neutral by taking the same position short. So, the, this original position has to be long. Now, delta of forward, remember uh, what is the delta of a forward contract? Delta of a forward contract is this expression exponential r minus q into t. Remember, what is the value of a forward contract? f is equal to s e to the power r minus q into t. So, del of f upon del of s gives you this expression e to the power r minus q into t this which is precisely this expression. So, this is the delta of the forward contract. r is given as this much, q is the given as this much t is given as this much, this is for one, one unit, one unit of currency. So, delta of this expression turns out to be 1.56831. Therefore, 
this is the total required delta this is the delta for one uh, if you have a, a forward contract on one pound therefore the number of pounds that are required are 620 uh, 6.20 million divided by this much which happens to be this so you have to take forward contracts on this much million pounds or this much pounds in order to uh, 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 forward short position remember short position this much million pounds under the forward contract to make the position delta neutral remember this is a uh, this is a long position so you have to counter it with a short position so this is a short position these many million pounds will make the entire portfolio uh, delta neutral remember and this is a forward uh, this is a short position under the forward contract not spot value not a spot position is not a spot position it's a po uh, short position under forward contract right uh, calculate the delta of an add the money 6 month european call option on a non dividend paying stock when the risk free rate is 10% per annum and the stock price volatility is so much risk free rate r is 10% per annum and the stock price volatility is 25% per annum stock price sigma is 25% per annum and r is 10% per annum this is very important here at the money 6 month option the, the 6 month is quite clear this is the remaining to, uh, time to maturity at the money means what at the mean money means s upon k is equal to 1 this is the implication of this expression at the money s upon k is equal to 1. So, s is equal to k r is equal to 10 percent sigma is equal to 25 percent t is equal to 0 0.5 years gives me d 1 as this figure that is equal to 0 0.3712 and what is delta delta is n of t 1 or sigma uh, or phi of d 1 as you may like it and that turns out to be 0 0.64. So, this is equal to delta. Now, these are some derivations uh, these are some derivations of the various option grids that we have talked about uh, del uh, in the black Scholes model uh, delta is equal to phi of t 1 the entire proof is here. Uh, uh, using the Black Scholes model. Similarly, gamma as the first derivative of delta with respect to the stock price using the Black Scholes model, we have this expression for gamma. And then we have theta, uh, theta is uh, deriv uh, again and derivation used starting from the Black Scholes model is given here. Uh, theta is given by this expression, this whole expression, right. And finally, V guy is given by this expression starting from the Black Scholes model. Uh, in fact, rho is also here, rho is given by this expression. So, the, in the proofs of the derivation of various option Greeks in the Black Scholes model are all given here. And uh, um, those interested viewers who want to dwell into the mathematics of it, uh, the algebra and calculus of it are very welcome to go through this. Uh, but this is slightly uh, away from the mainstream and that is why I shall not talk in detail about this, but these derivations are here with, with you, uh, you can make use of it. Right, so, so far so good for the, for the uh, option Greeks. Uh, so, uh, let us recap where we stand, we have talked about uh, forward contracts, we have talked about futures, in, uh, we have talked about options option Greeks also in, in the context of uh, options. Uh, now, we come to the fourth fundamental derivative which are called swaps. So, what are swaps? Uh, swaps are basically contracts, they are contracts relating to exchange of cash flows. Uh, these are over the counter agreements, in other words they are tailor made. Uh, they involve uh, two parties usually they uh, of course, they can involve more than two parties when there is a mediator we will be talking about that an intermediary can be there who arranges the who arranges the contract. Uh, so, um, that can be a broker or a broker bank or a financial institution. So, a swap is essentially an over the counter agreement between two companies to exchange cash flows 
in the future. The fundamental thing is that the you in most of the swaps, one of the cash flows is, is, is fixed in terms of certain parameters and the other stream of cash flows is variable in terms of or is, is fixed in fixed in relation to a certain variable parameter. For example, let us talk about the interest rate swap which is perhaps the uh, most common form of swap. In the interest rate swap, one party agrees to pay interest on a certain principle, notional principle, it may not be real and the principle may not be exchanged between the parties, usually it is not exchanged between the parties, but uh, one party agrees to pay interest at a fixed rate on this principle worked on a certain day count basis and the other party agrees to pay interest on the same principle, but calculated in relation to a certain market variable. For example, it could be the LIBOR rate, the London interbank offer rate which is very, very common. Uh, of course, in India we also have the Mumbai interbank offer rate, MIBOR. But by and large, we, LIBOR is far more common, far more popular across the world. Uh, uh, so, that is one example. Of course, we could have different benchmarks. We could have prime rate as a, as, as a, as a benchmark rate. Uh, again, that, that, is, that is the fluctuating rate. Whatever the value of that fluctuating rate is at a particular point in time, uh, you add a certain spread to it. That may also be 0. That spread may also be 0, but it may have a positive value. And the floating rate paying party then pays interest at that particular rate on the same principle which is used for calculating the fixed rate. That is an example of an interest rate swap. We shall talk more about it. So, this agreement, this which is called the swap agreement, swap contract, defines the dates on which the cash flows are to be paid, and more importantly, it defines the manner, it elucid elucidates the manner in which these cash flows are to be computed. That is very important. You see, it is an exchange of cash flows, but how they are computed, that is embedded in the swap contract. So, uh, uh, as I mentioned, one of the uh, one of the parties usually pays fixed and the other party has some, some link with, with a certain market variable or an exchange rate, an interest rate or a commodity price or whatever. Now, swaps can also be viewed as a forward contract. What is a forward contract? In a forward contract, what do we have? This is my t equal to 0. This is the maturity of the forward contract at capital T. At capital T, what happens? I pay a certain price. So, I pay a price k and I receive one unit of the asset, let us call it asset A. I receive one unit of the asset A. Now, this asset A, if I sell in the market, it would give me a certain value, it would give me a certain price which is given by S T comma A, the price of the asset A. So, in that sense or in some sense, this can be construed as an exchange of cash flows of k versus s t comma a. I am receiving s t comma a and I am paying k. So, at, at a very rough level, at a very you know elementary level, a swap can also be interpreted as a forward contract. Uh, as a one, uh, see the basic thing is a forward contract is a one time contract. Um, so, a one time swap for us, let us call it a one time swap. A one time swap could be interpreted as a forward contract. I am paying k and I am receiving s t. No, this is variable. So, the s t a is variable. It is not fixed. It depends on the current market price, whereas k is fixed. So, that justifies what I have just mentioned. Of course, a lot of nuances have been overlooked in this interpretation, but basically this is what is a swap. We we will extend this uh, uh, and to talk about the forward rate agreement. A forward contract is a general term, a forward rate agreement is a type of a forward contract and a swap is an extension of forward rate agreement. This is the interrelationship between them. A forward rate 
a forward contract and a forward rate agreement are basically one time exchanges of cash flows. How a forward rate agreement is arrived, we will talk about. But for the moment, a forward rate agreement and a forward contract are one time cash flows at a point in time, so let's say 3 months, 6 months or 1 year, whatever it is from today. Uh, swaps have a series of cash flows, a sequence of cash flows uh, and they are they are exchanged at inter uh, at certain usually usually equal periods of time okay so swaps consist of a number of frs you might say a series of frs bundled together it's a bundle of frs forward rate agreements what forward rate agreements are we'll talk about in the next uh, lecture uh, thank you